Hello world, this is your host, Gulmeki Saleh, the founder and creative director of the Golden Tree of Goodness. You're watching Listen to Understand with Gulmeki. This is a webcast that wants to promote goodness through understanding. We want to empower our audience to break the cycle of hate by creating an environment where there's understanding amongst all people through the universal message of the golden rule, which is to treat others as one would treat oneself. Today, we have a special guest, Farjana Khan, who will speak about how to have positive mental health. And here she is. Hello. Hello. How are you? Pleasure to be here. Fine. The pleasure is all mine. How are you doing? Great. Great. Farjana, Farjana Khan is a PhD clinical psychologist. She's the author of five books. Wow. <laughs> And she's a mother. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Amazing. She's a life coach, activist. She has appeared on television and radio talk shows. And she's the founder and president of AKKI, which she'll tell us more about, which helps domestic <laughs> violence victims, victims of in-law abuse, emotional and physical, and victims of sexual abuse by family members, and victims of family and drugs. So wow, she does great work. And there's also a fun fact about her. She loves rollerblading. <laughs> <laughs> you know, once you get become a mother, all that stuff stop. Or do you you still doing it? Are you, oh, I'm still doing it. I love I, adventure. <laughs> I had stopped when I was a kid, but when I got married many years later, I started doing it and I was like, wow, I still know. <laughs> it's good I didn't fall on my head or anything. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to start the introduction to this topic and we want uh, for Jana Khan to make us understand what this topic is how to have a how, how to have positive mental health can you give us an introduction into this sure uh so this this topic is very important to me um obviously uh because I'm in the mental health profession and just for other personal reasons. Uh, positive mental health is the ability to deal with your emotions in a positive manner, basically, right? So when you're dealing with life situations, you're dealing with people, work, tragedy, having those skills to process those emotions, right? Mm -hmm. And just like we take care of our physical health by exercising, by eating well, no one teaches us how to take care of our mental health, right? There's, there, no one is teaching us this skill. So this is why I came up with the Watch Yourself Technique from my fifth book, uh, where I teach individuals how to maintain positive mental health with specific steps. Just like physical health, we do the exercises, right? We do the eating well. Our mental health also needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Wow. That, that's very important because I see a lot of people, a lot of people who, they're very good people, but they just don't know how to manage their emotions. Uh, exactly. Crisis happen, they go over and they, they don't, they don't want to be crazy and mean and rude, but because they never learned how to manage their emotions, that's how they act. But that's always good in them. You know, we could find that good in them. So. Sure. And I, I just wanted to talk about the importance of, positive mental health because just look think about it there's increased suicide rates there's the high rates of drug abuse alcohol abuse school shootings just general feelings of lack of contentment in among individuals right mm -hmm. so as a psychologist i started noticing some patterns where like you said there's no min there's no formal training for individuals right on how to have positive mental health and we just learn these skills along the way, right? When tragedy happens, right? Or these tools, these skills are acquired after, after in adulthood. Mm -hmm. Particularly children are never taught how to process emotions, right? So this is why I feel like maintaining, teaching individuals, society, how to maintain positive mental health is very crucial. True. You're very right. Um, you're also a teacher and you've seen that in school. Yes, yes. And many of the problems because children don't, they don't know how to manage their emotions. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And that's where the bullying starts. That's where the fighting starts and the harassment starts. Exactly. There's no preventive measures. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so why is it, what motivate you 
to do this? And what motivate you to do this? And how long have you been doing it? Sure. So I've been doing this for almost 15 years, I think mm -hmm. even more than 15 years working with families, children. Uh, and um, my motivation, it comes from it comes from my upbringing, I think it has roots in my upbringing. I have a cousin, I had a I have a cousin who uh, she was my best friend and at, at, a, at a very young age, she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder mm -hmm. after an environmental trigger. And it just started making me think, oh, you know, what happened? Why do people, why does, why, how do people develop mental disorders? Also, uh, as I was growing up, I was noticing cultural issues, other biological versus environmental factors, you know, in individuals and the, wh why they make certain decisions, the stigma related to getting help, um, certain things being normalized, generational gaps, and parents not having the tools to help their kids. So all these issues just prompted me um, to become a social change agent, stop the cycle of dysfunction, and bring more awareness. And I get, uh, through my doctoral program, I, it was solidified just to become a social change agent. I wanted to go and make a difference in the world. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it, t it takes a good heart. You know, you, you have that good heart and you have the intentions and you do the action. You want to bring that positive change into the world. And this is where you found your gift right here and yes people understand their emotions Amazing. yes thank you yeah. um yeah I'm, I'm here sharing it with everyone that's why i'm looking down on my laptop <laughs> no um, problem yeah uh, because because i think this is a very important topic and a lot of people need to hear this a lot of relationships could be saved a lot of, of course be you know avoided just by learning our emotions and understanding why we should learn them Exactly. Yeah. In what aspect of our lives, our lives can we apply your advice? Uh, positive mental health can apply in all areas of our lives: work, family, friends, handling life situations, dealing with loved ones, right? Your own health. Mm -hmm. So these are having when you have positive mental health, you're able to make the right decisions, right? Yeah. Process those emotions. Don't you're you're. You don't become react, uh, reactive to situations. You're more proactive, mm -hmm. right? So when you have those that that help that your mental health is well, mm -hmm. you're able to make good decisions. Wow! Yeah, using a clear mind to everything. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. An aware, clear mind. Yeah. A lot of us were so just doing so many things that our minds become clogged up, and we just can't think straight. Sure. We become, we, a lot of us are always are in this robotic state. Mm -hmm. Let's get up for work. Let's, you know, get the kids ready. Let's come back home. Let's cook. And, and we're in this robotic state, right? Yeah. Clouded with emotions and, and post emotions that were never processed. Mm -hmm. So we just live through life just blindly, mm -hmm. right? Waiting for the next event to happen, the next tragedy to happen. And so, you know, like you said, having a very, uh, being aware of, your emotions it's very important yeah very good advice so those who are tuning in please do share because this is great advice and it could save a lot of marriages it could save a lot of relationship it could save a child from ruining his future uh not doing yes. something that he'll regret or she'll regret later in life um, exactly it'll, it'll save someone from committing suicide just you know if they just have this um awareness of how to manage their emotions so can you sh share a story with us about how, maintain, how to maintain positive mental health and how it has impacted you? So, uh, so how has it impacted me, yeah. right? Okay. So I, I, I am where I am because of my, my, because I maintain, due to maintaining my positive mental health. Mm -hmm. uh, you have two choices in life, right? You can either become powerful or powerless and I say this a lot you can either become powerful or powerless right when negative things happen yeah. and I always choose to be powerful and the reason I'm able to do that is because I work on my mental health consistently right so I learned to maintain my mental health through through discipline to, sorry excuse me so through through discipline forming good habits self-reflection and processing my emotions yeah so you know, it helps you balance life, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, there, there, there is a scale of intelligence and emotional intelligence is one of it. And the science is exactly. finding it that emotional intelligence will lead you to success. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a very important topic that, you know, a lot of people are now getting aware of it. You know, it's the, if the more we discuss it, the more people will be able to adjust their emotions and good things will happen. Yes. Yeah. Um, so those who are still watching, you know, share with your friends. And because this is a very important topic, we're here with, with Farjana Khan who's talking about how to um, have a positive mental health, which, you know, a lot of us don't always have. Sometimes we're brought up with a negative mindset that, you know, uh, when something bad happens, we start screaming, throwing things around or questioning God, why, why, why? But we don't, adjust, we don't um, reflect on the, the issue or the circumstance and try to uh, adjust our emotions to it instead of, changing the situation we just our emotions because sometimes you can't always change the situation right someone dies someone mm -hmm. passes away what can you do right you can't bring them back to life you have to exactly. adjust your own emotions so exactly tell me how the golden rule is related to positive mental health okay so uh so basically what how do we maintain positive mental health right what's the golden rule yeah. uh so there's specific skills that you can use to promote positive mental health. Mm -hmm. And this is when I, as I mentioned earlier, I came up with the watch yourself technique, mm -hmm. right? And the watch yourself technique is, is there's another you that's watching you at all times. Mm -hmm. So there's another you right here that's watching you at all times. It's a developing that sense of awareness. Mm -hmm. And I teach this to students. I teach this to uh, clients where it's a, it's, it's always being in that state, right? And being in that state, it helps you. There's three things you can do to maintain positive mental health. Obviously, there's a lot more. There's obviously self-care, right? Yeah. There is obviously spirituality, right? Yeah. Which you have to, you, ha you must have in the sense of self-care, taking your vitamins, right? It always starts with you. Yeah. But the technique of watching yourself is where there's another you that's always watching your emotions, that's always reflecting. That's always building confidence. So there's three specific skills that you need you need to attain, attain to to develop a habit of in order to maintain positive mental health, which I'm going to get into. Right. Okay. Number one is consistently processing your emotions. This is what where you understand that it's okay to have emotions. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to get sad because you are human. That's part of being human. But it's not okay to just bottle it up, right? It's not okay to bottle it up. So here, you watch your feelings, you watch those emotions and let them pass through you. Okay. So understanding that, that it's okay to have emotions, number one, right? And then processing those emotions. So one technique that I, I, I use a lot is, I'm feeling angry. So state why, what you're feeling. I'm feeling angry right now. Mm -hmm because and you say why you're feeling angry and it's okay i accept you so basically you're letting those emotions pass through you right literally pass through you not just not even a lot of us tend to just not even know how we're feeling right and and if we do know how we feel we just let it sit there or we have negative ways of dealing with them right like you had said throwing things or whatnot so consistently watching those emotions and letting them pass through you. So that's number one, right? Number two is also, let me just repeat that because it's very important. Yeah. Or you can say, I'm feeling sad right now because I failed my test and it's okay. I accept you. So doing that and that what, what this leads to is that you're, you're acknowledging your emotion. You're saying why, why acknowledging the reason, and then you're letting it pass through you. So basically the emotions are basically just, passing through right just like the big sky and then the clouds are just passing through those are those emotions just let them go just let them go right mm -hmm. number two is reflect on your actions so reflection or right? another technique another skill that no one teaches us right self-reflection right so here this is what you what you do is you this is another technique that i i do is a weekly reflection so you stop and you know you say to yourself what is working in my life what is not working in my life, right? So uh, doing this on a regular basis, 
And then whatever is not working, finding solutions, right? Alternatives for those. Another, another, under that, that uh, umbrella of reflection is watch, reflecting on your actions on a weekly basis. So like maybe every Friday or every, after the weekend is over, you, you, you do a weekly reflection. Like, oh, what, are, what were my actions this week? Were they positive or negative, right? The neg- they were gonna, there are going to be some negatives, right? Yeah. So the negatives, you're going you're gonna to say, okay, next time I'll try this. Right, so weekly reflection, self-reflection is key, right? So fixing those negative actions. Because if you're not self-reflecting and you're just going through life, la, 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 right? What are you, what's, you're never going to improve. You're never going to uh, develop better habits, right? So that's self-reflection. So I talked about processing your emotions and I talked about reflect, self-reflection, right? Reflection, reflecting on your actions. The other one, which is, oh, really really important is consistently building your confidence consistently building your confidence and why is that important oh my goodness think about it nowadays everyone's self-esteem is 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 based on how many likes we get on facebook and how many likes we get on instagram right that's what's what what's happening unfortunately because of you know social media and whatnot so you have to like you have to actively build your confidence it's not like before where you're like okay you go through life and you know you get a an award and you're like oh wow i I think i'm i'm smart no you need to build your confidence you need to build your children's confidence right and and you have to understand not only there's influences of social media now right there's also peer culture which is normalizing a lot of things like put down so you're in school your peers might be normalizing put down now nowadays peers are not school peers in schools basically kids in schools it, it, they're, it's 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 nor it's being normalized put downs are normalized underage drinking is being normalized right drugs drug use is being normalized yeah. and you're you are basically looked and this is again i work with kids a lot right i work with kids i work with adolescents and families you're actually looked down upon when if you have values you're considered sensitive if you stand up for yourself or an outcast and so this is why it's so important as parents, as educators, mental health professionals, to, to bring that awareness that we actively need to work on our confidence. So, you know, obviously I have a specific techniques that, you know, I can, you know, if any, anyone wants to, you know, contact me, I can talk about. But there's positive self-affirmations, right? Making a list of your successes, right? And looking at those, you know, on a regular basis, maybe once a month ago, like, oh, Oh, look at all my successes. So constantly reminding yourself, right? That, wait, I am awesome. I am, you know, I, I, I am an amazing person. So we're doing that because society, trust me, will have all its ways to, like I said, through social media, peer influence, to certain, you know, especially for kids, making us feel certain ways, right? True. So building that confidence. So those are the three basic crucial techniques i mean under the umbrella of watching yourself is there's another you consistently Mm -hmm. watching yourself and maintaining uh, what were they processing your emotions right yeah number two is self-reflection you know consistently you need to self-reflect consistently you need to process your emotions by what watching them right letting them pass through you and then building your confidence Mm -hmm. consistently and if you develop those three habits on a regular basis where you're doing this you the other you is watching yourself Mm -hmm. consistently with the self-confidence right with the self-reflection with the processing your your emotions you will be able to maintain and have positive mental health yeah you will great points yeah the three steps i I believe them 100 percent that will help you maintain a healthy mindset uh, sure. The, I want to just touch on the second one. Self-reflection is something we don't do as much today. In the past, it, we, we didn't have the electronics in our hands. We didn't have the TV. So we would go out as kids or adults. We'll be going outside. We'll see nature as more often. And we will sit and you know think because we will have more time to think about ourselves. Mm-hmm. And that's sure. something I really like. I really like also get my kids and once a week we have a reflection class where we sit and we talk about topics that will help us reflect better. 
Um, but all points are very important, being consistent on processing, processing your emotions, self-reflection, uh, building your confidence. And building your confidence, you just have to go out there and do your thing and not fear control you. And a lot of times mm -hmm. it's the fear, the, emo the emotion of fear that controls us and tells us, no, no, you can't do it. Exactly, exactly. So, t you know, having those skills in place that will, you know, counteract that, mm -hmm. right? So how crucial do you believe it is to have this knowledge and apply it during our times? You've briefly mentioned in the beginning about suicide, the bullying and other things that are going on, but how crucial? Can you elaborate more? Sure. Uh, it's extremely crucial. It's maintaining your teaching individuals how to maintain positive mental health is extremely crucial, especially at this time. Why? There's the influx of social media, right? The media influences in our homes. There's suicide rates, right? Which are increasing. You just look at the news, right? There's drug and alcohol abuse. There's domestic violence, right? Uh, there's the peer, like I said, the peer culture in schools of normalizing put downs, right? Mm -hmm. Put downs are normalized. Now, okay, sure. someone can, you can be at school and someone can say you're ugly and you're supposed to just be okay with that, mm -hmm. you know? That doesn't make sense. Uh, not teaching kids how to process emotions. Look at all the school shootings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, I mentioned this in, in my other talks. We learn math. Schools teach us math. School teach, schools teach us reading, right? True. Um, et cetera. Our parents at home teach us manners, right? They teach us how to be good students, right? How to get, but no, do our, do our parents, uh, most parents and schools, no one teaches anybody, no one teaches us how to process our emotions, right? Yeah. Think about it. To the two realms of our lives, right? Work, school, home, where is this being taught? Nowhere. Nowhere. Nowhere, right? So this is why I'm so passionate about this. This is why I created the Watch Yourself Technique, which again, you can find on Amazon. And it really will help your families, right? Because this is for teachers, this is for parents, this is for any mental health professional yeah. where oh. you're, I'm, where I'm teaching these, yeah. these three basic, how to develop those three basic habits under the realm of watching yourself, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Process your emotion, self-reflection, and building self-confidence on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's extremely important. Yeah. Even for adults, I think your book is important because there's a lot of adults who never had this. Yeah. No, of course not. Learning of course not. They were young. So it's important. You know, even I had to learn a lot. Um, and I even uh, contacted my formal uh, employer, who, the school I used to work at, and I recommended your book. I said, this is so important for, you know, if you could add it. Oh, before. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As long as it goes, it, it makes a difference. It, yeah. it, it helps someone, you yeah. know, some family. True. Because it's like, it's crucial. Like I said, it's, it, we have we have to change, we have to change this paradigm, yeah. right? We have to make a shift, shift in our thinking of, okay, is it just math and reading and, 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 and just becoming employees and workers, mm -hmm. right? What about, what about the fact that learning these skills will have, like you said, better, better mar 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 marital relationships, right? Better family life, better humans, right? Humans, yep. because we're able to process those emotions. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and my son, he's always telling me, Mom, it's not about the degree nowadays. You know, they look at overall. It looks, it, they ask you about, you know, they're concerned about your worth et ethics, which goes back to your emotional intelligence, how you manage your, your emotions. Uh, so exactly. it's, it's even important exactly. for the workforce. You know, you, your employee will take you in for a while, but once they know your true self and you don't know how to manage yourself, because there's always going to be coworkers, right? You're going to be always dealing with coworkers, and if you don't know how to deal yeah. with them, uh, how to adjust your emotions, because there will be always that one person who annoys you, right? Who are you going to exactly? And not just coworkers. There's life situations, right? The the, the train breaks. You know, the train. There's a delay on the train, mm -hmm. and or so many things that happen. It's how do you how do you deal with life, right? Sure. People. Yeah. So those who are watching, please do share. We have an exciting topic on how to have a positive mental health with Farjana Khan, who is a psychologist, a uh, author. So she's doing great, amazing work in the community she's at. She also has her nonprofit organization, which we'll get to. 
Um, so why is it important for parents and teachers to teach children how to manage their emotions? Why is it parents and teachers? Okay, basically it's important for parents and teachers to teach kids the skill because it's, they're forming their child, children's character, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you're, not, you're not just creating robots to work, mm -hmm. right? Or just, just live life in a robotic state, which I mentioned. That, you know, you, you parents and teachers are there to impact, right? Teach life skills. Uh, you, you're there to create agile, lifelong learners, right? So what do I mean by agile, lifelong learners? You, you're teaching your, your uh, how do I say this? You're basically uh, influencing kids to become adults that are able to learn quickly, mm -hmm. right? And apply those skills in different situations very quickly, right? So you're teaching children to be agile, lifelong learners, not just in the workplace, like you had mentioned, it's in, in all realms of life, right? And if you want them to become movers and shakers in the world, they must have positive mental health. They must know how to maintain their, how to process those emotions. They, they must know this. Then they will succeed, right? Think about it. So that's why it's very important for parents and teachers to, to take this absolutely seriously. Yeah, it is. Um, sometimes even the teachers need to learn. Because I've been working as a teacher for 14 years and I've seen situations where teachers do not know how to manage their emotions. And even parents, because well, parents comes in and they're storming and yelling and screaming, why did my child get this bad grade? Or, you know, there was an incident at school. Instead of, you know, they don't realize that the younger kids are watching us adults where there's a parent. Exactly. They just exactly. We're role models. Negative way. So this is exactly. important for teachers and parents to have a workshop. And if you could even do it, it would be great uh, through your book. And, uh, you know, a lot sure. of things will come out of, from it. Um, sure. Yeah, because, like, remember how I mentioned earlier when we um, started talking, adults don't know this skill either. Many adults, I'm not saying all, but most adults don't know this skill either because n no one taught them, sure. right? No one has taught this hasn't started. This is a new phenomenon. No one is. No one knows how to process their emotions. No one knows how to maintain that positive health. They only learn this skill, like I said, after some tragedy happens, right? And then they just don't know how to deal with it, and then they go to a therapist or or they read some article. Or there's no formal training. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, you mentioned the last uh, lasting effect on a child uh, who processes their emotions. Are there anything else you want to elaborate on that part? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Ba basically, um, what are some of the lasting effects on a child who learns about processing their emotions, yeah. right? So these children, if they do learn how to process their emotions, they'll have better coping skills, right? Mm -hmm. They'll learn, they'll know how to deal with put downs in schools, right? Mm -hmm. They'll have personal power, they'll know, they'll have those techniques to deal with, with life, with family, right? Mm -hmm. Family dynamics. Mm -hmm. uh, they will learn how to have better work Inter interactions at work when they're older yeah family life marital life right achieving goals um hopefully with this this you know knowledge the su suicide rates will uh, suicide rates school shootings and overall negativity will decrease you know yeah. that's the goal yeah. you know if we can all uh, talk about this and raise awareness yeah absolutely there's there are there this can be a solution. True. Yes. As I you agree. can see, I'm very passionate about it. <laughs> yeah. I see it. Uh, the, <laughs> the book, I need to get it. I'm waiting to order it. Uh, but it's something we all need to have on our bookshelf. And not just to pass there, but take it and use it and utilize it. And share sure. Because this is very crucial, especially... Um, you know, when we're living in diverse world, right, in the United States or Europe, there's a lot of diversity going on with the immigration and refugees. And we have all people from all different backgrounds coming and living together in a neighborhood. And then they work together. They go to school together. We need to understand each other. And one of the things is their emotions and my emotion. I need to also need understand my own emotions. And I also need to understand the person's emotions and help cope with it and uh, fixed situations that come around. So, I, you also have your 
organization, the AKKI. Would you like to elaborate on that before we say, ask, ask the final questions? Yeah, so uh, the AKKI Foundation is a foundation that uh, I created because of a lot of domestic issues that uh, in certain homogenous cultures uh, that were not being addressed. Mm -hmm. And this in the that realm, it basically basically what 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 this foundation provides is emergency funds for individuals in certain situations where they don't have the money to get out of a domestic uh, violence, situ violence uh, situ uh, situation. So let's say they're at home and they want to leave and they don't have money for a cab ride back mm -hmm. to, a safe, to a safe place. So they get money. They don't have money for the first month's rent mm -hmm. because, of, because they just left the situation with four kids. So this is where this foundation provides you know, monetary funds mm -hmm. for these uh, for women, for anyone in these situations. Not only that, you know, it helps, and it provi we, uh, I also provide a free therapy for a month, right? Just so they can, the individual can get situated. Yeah. So, you know, it's, wow. it's to help. Yeah. But that's a, that's a, that's a great thing you're doing because a lot of people have these issues. And you also, I, I was listening to your other talk where you talk about in law abuse. Yes. You have yes, definitely. Under that realm, I, yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, yes, another, like I said, certain homogenous cultures, is a, is a, there's a lot of uh, prevalence of in-law abuse, mm -hmm. where in the sense that the in-laws are abusing the daughter-in-law, right? Or, or there's, uh, there's, or some, or vice versa, there's that dynamic. Mm -hmm. And so getting out, out of those situations, because no one talk, is talking about that. And it's, and you hear a lot of things, a lot of situations where it, it gets to such bad and horrific stages where you know I don't want to get to you know but it basically there's it is it is it is prevalent it's yeah. happening in a lot of families and yeah. and no one is talking about it so I help those women who are in those situations where their sister-in-law is abusing them or there and it can't it doesn't have to be just physical abuse it can be mental abuse as well right so and it or it, the whole family teams up mm -hmm. and abuses this daughter-in-law right and so i'm getting those women help as well mm -hmm. so this this organization this foundation was foundation was created for various reasons various reasons yeah yeah even if they <laughs> they had understood emotional intelligence or how to manage their emotion a lot of these problems within the in-laws will not happen uh, because a lot for instance Bill yeah a lot of go ahead a lot because you know they're mad they're angry they're upset and they take it out on the door in law or whoever it may be um and exactly this, or and what a important yeah for <laughs> in laws exactly and and then the building the confidence so if the daughter in law has the confidence right it's a whole like those three the three the three of them the, the three have the three skills i mentioned right if yeah. the daughter in law has confidence she can stand up for herself as well Right? Sure. In the right way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's why so. before I became a mother in law. <laughs> I have two beautiful <laughs> daughter in laws to my two that's amazing. They're married. So I said, you know, I don't want that kind of relationship where the mother in law and daughter in laws are uh, on opposite ends. So uh, before getting her, I went and did my research and say, why why do these problems happen? And I, I tried to Great. make sure I don't become that type of mother in law because I wanted to Great. have a better relationship because it's crucial for the upbringing of my grandchildren, the, 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 the marriage of my son and his. Yes. I yes. have to make sure I'm in the right because I'm the leader, you know, I'm the oldest, right? Exactly. I have to, you know, sometimes sacrifice my own emotions and put them down just until, you know, we, we, we get to, uh, on a page where we, we start understanding each other. So I, I, I'm going to say uh, so far, our, my relationship with my daughter-in-laws are amazing. <laughs> I'm great, great. Good to hear. <laughs> I'm happy. So, you yeah. know, it's something, you know, I said, you know, if oppression has been happened to happen to someone, we should not continue the oppression, you know. So hopefully that, you know, people could learn so much from you, you know, they take your advice and put it into action. So continuing on with the questions, um, what final advice do you have for the audience? And another question, what other plans do you have for yourself? And before you leave, I also want you to mention where they could contact you. Also put it on the comment bar, your, 
your contact information, your website. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. So what final advice? Uh, one final advice would be learn, to ha learn how to have positive mental health. You have to take care of your inner space. Mm -hmm. You have to take care of this space of yours. Uh, develop those good habits. Life will always have ups and downs. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Who doesn't have problems? Yeah. Life will always life will always have ups and downs. Mm -hmm. But you, like I said, you can either become powerful or powerless. Mm -hmm. So start to change your mindset, develop those habits, and and oh, remember there's oh, get into the habit of there's another you watching yourself, watching yourself at home. Mm -hmm. So are you just cleaning the dishes and 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 and, and doing the laundry and and not smiling and, and stressed out or or are you are you just Stop and watch yourself. Like, okay, I'm, uh, let me smile. Okay, let me smile. Nothing is a big deal. Okay, life is great. Nothing is a big deal. So always being in that state of awareness where you're watching yourself, right? You're self-reflecting, right? Mm -hmm. And processing those emotions. So just learn to develop those skills and they will yeah. change your life. Mm -hmm. It will change your life. I promise you, it will change your life. Mm -hmm. You will soar. Little you will start soaring. Yeah, you will reach all those the, goals that you want to reach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. you. You've done an amazing job for us in sharing your goodness and helping us to manage our emotions on how to have a positive mindset. Um, if the audience have any questions for Farjana Khan, you know, please do ask right now. Uh, this is the time to ask any questions you have. I'm going to go through the comment bar. I see Jennifer. Hello. Uh, we she she has a comment. We're all society. We we as a society must get protect. <laughs> they keep sending you phone calls and messages during the time of life. <laughs> okay, uh -huh. so Jennifer is uh, sorry. They kind of broke off, so I was just trying to hear it. Yeah, because the phone call came through. Oh, I see. <laughs> We as a society must get proactive on mental health issues. Bravo to you. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, so most of them are just good comments. You know, they're giving you. Um, everyone is happy about what you're discussing. And salam and hello to everyone. Uh, any other questions um, before Farjana Khan leaves? If you have any questions, you may ask right now. But if you have anything else to say for Jana Khan, if in the meantime you could um, say it until anyone has any questions. Oh, for me? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, do you want me to give my contact information? Or maybe I can uh, yeah. write it in the comment box? Is that it? Okay. Also mention okay. it. Yeah, I'll my... just put it out. Sure. So I have my YouTube channel uh, where you can just go to YouTube and just type in Dr. Farjana Khan, okay. Dr. F-A-R-J-A-N-A-K-H-A-N. And I talk about a lot of these pertinent topics, mm -hmm. you know, topics that a lot of people don't talk about. Right. Mm -hmm. So definitely log into that. Uh, yeah. To subscribe. Also, if you go to Amazon, you can type in my name again, Farjana Khan. And uh, I also go by... Dr. Prajana Kolasar Khan, Kolasar Khan, and you can uh, look at all the five books that I've, I have up over the, uh, have there, yeah. and hopefully they can help be useful for you in your classrooms, in your homes, and also there's another site, it's called The Balanced Muslim, where my husband and I also do some, a lot of work together, where we uh, talk about, again, a lot of pertinent topics, so you can uh, log into that and contact us for uh, any sessions so yeah it's all there <laughs> we, we are going to put all this information on the comment bar below where you could act sure um, her sure information. her books are amazing she did re write three uh, on islamic holidays for children yes and the one was the one that you mentioned about the emotional uh, and mental health curriculum which yes process emotions which i yes. i forwarded to my previous employer and what was thank you. you what's your fourth book what's your fifth book? oh oh sure and then the uh so three are on the islamic holidays one is on processing emotions i mean the watch yourself technique right yeah. and then 
the fifth one is uh, it was a, a recent research study that I did on parental involvement in school home communication. Okay. So, and 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 how to have good relationships. Basically, you know the the relationship with those with the two variables. Yeah. So that was very interesting. And just so you know what my future work looks like, I have another book coming out. It's a self help book, mm-hmm. and it's in a with Quranic quotes. So there's a lot of self-help books, right, where there's always uh, there's quotes. Uh, this is going to be a little different, where it's going to be with uh, with had- Quran and Hadith in there. So it'll be really amazing to have those self-help techniques uh, with Islamic uh, knowledge as well. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm coming up with the another, my next book is called the uh, No Fail Teaching Method method so it's for teachers where you know there's certain things certain uh so there's a write, writing technique that i i use that helps that helps almost every writer that i've ever been and it's been so useful so i want to share it with the world mm-hmm. so it's a no fail teaching method book where i teach i will be talking about classroom management i'll be talking about writing uh how to prom- you know how to have students write uh and just other techniques that that have through my 15 years uh, plus of teaching have, you know, shown a lot of growth in wow. my in students. So very excited about those. And you have how many children? <laughs> Three? I have two children. Two. I have a 14-year-old and, and a two-and-a-half-year-old. <laughs> you're, you're very busy and doing great work. And uh, doing yeah. great- So I do need to maintain my positive mental <laughs> health <laughs> yeah. on a daily basis to balance it all, yeah. right? <laughs> We have to, um, what we preach, we have to put into practice. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, our children are the first one who sees us. And they exactly. practice what we practice, not what we say. <laughs> exactly. And family is always priority, right? True. <laughs> and I'm, so knowing your priorities, right? Yeah, so of course. that's another big one. <laughs> I'm very grateful that you could tune in, uh, the audience, everyone who had tuned in. And I'm very grateful for, for Jana Khan. For Jana Khan for giving us this talk, which is a very important talk. And, you know, this, so uh, next week we're having another speaker uh, and her name is Rabab Alma. You've heard her before on my talk show. Uh, she spoke last season and she's coming back again and she's going to be talking about the imposter syndrome and self-doubt, a talk on overcoming self-sabotage and feeling like a fraud. So it will be in Octo- on October 10th at 8 p.m. right here. Listen to Understand with Godmiki. I'll see you then. And thank you again for Jana Khan. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Take care. Have a good evening. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> Bye. Bye.